Right, it is time to unwrap some books. Yay! <laughs> hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this unwrapping. I made the decision that I want to go into the new year with all of my wrapped books unwrapped, so just to start the year with a fresh slate, clean slate, fresh start, clean slate, all of those things. Anyway, <laughs> as such, I will need to unwrap all of my wrapped books. So I decided to do videos with just that. Um, what I've done is I've separated the books into their corresponding colors, which represent a genre, category, or project. And so I'm doing a video for each one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to share what the color represents so that you can guess in the comments what you think the category is or genre or project. So these are going to be the pink books. There are a lot of them. There are more, more, more. There's a lot of them. They are almost exclusively paperbacks. And I am just super excited to get to this. This is definitely the category that I have the most books. By one book, there was another, red was second, <laughs> but pink was first with the most books. And I think it is also the, the uh, color where I bought the most new books. <laughs> so let's get this started because this could be a long video. Okay, so here we go. First one, paperback, goodness. And it's also for me, because there's so many paperbacks, it's probably where there's going to be the most surprises. Like, I will not remember the specific titles. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. Wow. I really, I really, I went, I double layered this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What could it be? That's not enough to guess. Oh, this corner is a good place to start. This corner is definitely a good place to start. Harlequin Nocturne Otherworld Protector by Jane Goodman. This is a paranormal romance. Wow, those colors are just delightful. And I got this. I did do reader's service. I tried that out, I guess, in, I guess in 2015. This is, this is from December 2015. And I think I read half of the ones that I got. And, um, and this is one of the ones I haven't read yet. So, can anyone guess the category yet? Let's go this side. This is a skinny one. Very skinny. Oh my gosh, it's very skinny. Is this the front? That looks like the back and upside down. Oh, can you guess the line? Woo! Harlequin presents A Forbidden Temptation by Anne Mather. I totally forgot I had this. This is from 2016. Looks like it. Woo! With the death of his wife still raw. Jack Connolly's mood is dark and dangerous. He's not looking for a woman until he meets buttoned up and beautiful Grace Spencer, who stirs his senses back to life. That looks pretty intense. Pretty intense. All right. Oh, this one's this one's a bit heftier. This one is a bit heftier. What are we working with here? Is that the cover? I think it is. The Devil Who Tamed Her by Joanna Johanna Lindsay. Wow, she has long hair. Really long hair. Okay, so this is, this looks like a historical romance. Ophelia Reed is incompar an incomparable beauty and a ruthless gossip. Ooh. Oh, does she need to be tamed? Oh, apparently she needs to have a set that. Oh, it does. Well, well, well. I don't know if she's being tamed or doing the taming. <laughs> I think this one might be not, not the, like it, a part of a series and not the first book. Cause I think I got it and then was like, uh Oh, I got to read the other book, but I'm not, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. So 
There you go. Have a sense. Oh gosh, I love this paper. When I wrapped it up in this paper, it was like on my bookshelf for like years and I'm like, I just, I was like, I should have kept that paper because I really like it. Anyway, let's see what it's hiding inside. I say, this did protect my books from the light. That looks like the back. Oh, oh, okay. Catherine Cookson, The Moth. I don't think I have read anything by Catherine Cookson before. And this book I've had, I think, for quite a long time. I think I got it at the church auction. My sisters will know that reference. Oh, <laughs> we used to go to an auction. Uh, one of my, our mom's friends, uh, part of her church, and it was an annual tradition, and they had a great book room. And uh, I think that's where I got this. I don't have many left from that. Haven't read it. In, in case that didn't come up, these are all books I haven't read. Okay, so The Moth. Okay. Oh, Shipyards. Oh, I don't, I don't want to, oh, I don't want to, it's too hard to, that one feels a bit spoilier if I did the description, so I'm sorry for making you wait and then not delivering. <laughs> did I really just say that? Okay. <laughs> Let's see what's next. That's the back. Mmm. So we have Incubus by Janet Elizabeth Jones, Harlequin Nocturne. Wow, that is quite a cover. That is quite a cover. So this looks like a paranormal romance, and this is from 2011. I thought it was an intrigue because that looks like the fingerprint. I don't, I don't remember that spine for the Nocturne before. Okay. Ooh. To save his kind, oh, I can't, I, there's no way I can pronounce his name, per agrees to participate in a dangerous experiment, one that takes his vampire thirst for blood and leaves him hungering for something new. Oh my gosh. I'll show, I can't, that's his name. There's no way. Not a clue how, how to say that. Excited for that. Okay, let's do, I do have one trade paperback, but let's keep going with the, the littles. I like little, I like little paperbacks. Oh, 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 I forgot I got this. Okay, so Silk Swords and Surrender by Jeannie Lin. This is a historical romance set in the Tang Dynasty. I got this at the library. And uh, I don't know if it's part of a series. It doesn't say, usually it says, like, on the series. There is a series by her that I am looking forward to reading that starts with uh, one of the Harlequin Undones, which I'm a really big fan of. I'm, I'm sad they let them go, but there's actually, there's like at least 70 and the library has lots of them. So there's lots to enjoy. So any guesses to the genre? I have a feeling this one won't be too, too tough to figure out. <laughs> Another super, super skinny one. By this point, I could probably, like, guess more than the genre. So I might not know the titles, but I definitely know probably where we're going with this one. With that little window cutout. Yep, another Harlequin Presents. So this is A Night of No Return by Sarah Morgan. Oh, wow, Sarah Morgan. Money, charm, and sensual skills don't make up for a heart colder than ice. Intriguing. No, one of the things that's so great about the presents is they're super short, 190 pages. I love that. I don't always love this. Like for me, a lot of them are about power and money and like jet setting lifestyle type stuff, which is not, I don't really, I'm, I'm, uh, it's not something that drives me. Um, so I like to read them, but like, like not a whole bunch at the same time. So, but there's definitely got some tension there. So that's always good. All right, we have a, we have a, this one's a bit heavier. Let's see what it can be. This way. I'm just guessing. I don't know that for sure. Looks like another library one, perhaps. Oh, 
I don't even know. Oh, okay, so False Impressions by Laura Caldwell. Um, this, I think, is, uh, this, is, oh, it is the sixth of five in a series. A six of five in a series. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's apparently what Goodreads said. I don't know. Um, so this one, I think, is a suspense. Yeah, it's a Harlequin Mira. Chicago attorney Izzy McNeil is ready to take a break from private investigation and focus on her career in criminal law, but as a favor, she agrees to work with Madeline Saga, a beautiful art gallery owner who fears her artwork, that artwork she has sold is fake, who is in her tight circle of artists and gallery owners that is guilty of the forgeries. Yeah, so this one's more of an intrigue um, one, but I think it is still makes sense in this category. Maybe, maybe. All right, let's keep going. Oh, this one I had to go on a diagonal. That means I was almost out of paper. This way, this way. Oh, sweet, sweet blaze. Oh, yes. A Taste of Paradise, unrated by Leslie Kelly and Shanna Gray. I think these are, I think these are short stories. I don't remember what the unrateds are. I think it's signed. That looks like, is that just me? That feels like it says Shanna. That would be super cool. Well, I'm gonna have to make sure I keep this one. Wow, I, was, I didn't know, I never noticed that before. So yeah, so this is two stories, I think, yeah. Addicted to You by Leslie Kelly and More Than a Fling by Shanna Gray. Potentially could be signed by Shanna. I don't know. Could be. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. That is very exciting. Never know what's going to happen in an unwrapping video. <laughs> All right, let's keep on keeping on. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. This one's in a little rough shape. Okay, Valentine's Night by Penny Jordan. I think this is historical? It's not, oh, well, hmm, I don't know. I actually don't. It looks like it's Harlequin, but I don't know what line it is. Maybe it's just Harlequin. 1989. In this outstanding selection of Harlequin and Silhouette books, we've chosen a showcase of award winners, those novels that professional lovers of romance are always talking about and readers can never forget. Oh, so maybe it was, look for the winner's circle insignia in each new title from January to June, and you know you've picked a winner. Where's the winner's insignia? Oh, there it is. So maybe that it was republishing or, I don't know. Valentine's Night. By this point, I think... What we're working with is probably pretty clear. <laughs> Let's do another skinny. I love this color. So it always, this one always feels like, like sort of between purple and pink. But part of that is the, um, like the, how deep the color is. Does that make any sense? Oh my, it's a leg. <laughs> ah, Harlequin Blaze, Captivate Me by Kira Sinclair, another unrated. I am a fan of the Blaze. Oh, I'm so sad that that line has gone under, but there's still lots to enjoy. And apparently I have a fair amount to enjoy. Your exclusive invitation, join us in the most sinful and decadent event of Mardi Gras. Oh, I can't pronounce it. The Baccarinalina Ball. Entree. Not sure, not sure how to pronounce that. Okay, so now these are getting really just tall stacks. So I gotta just move these. So we've made it through about mm, not even half. Um, so I'm gonna go with the one one trade paper back that I have. I do know what this is because it is the only one from this category that is this size. And this one I've had for quite some time. Like the 
the back. The bottom. Yes. Okay, so this is QBP's Mammoth Book of Erotica. And there is a bunch of the authors that have work in this collection. Wow, this is long. My goodness. Just shy of 600 pages. So, can you guess the genre? I have a feeling almost everyone, everyone probably has it by now. All right, so now we're on to the skinnies, or not the skinnies, the uh, brown paper bags. So I switched over to this at uh, the end of 2018, which is the last time I wrapped stuff up. And so let's get, see how many we can get through. Maybe we can get through all of them. It is possible. Ooh, ooh. I tape these very well. Wolf Claiming by Rhiannon Bird. This is part of, oh, it doesn't say. This is part of the Blood Runner series. It's kind of like an extra one. This one I read, I read most of the series. I think everything but this one. It's a shifter, uh, werewolf shifter series um, with a fair amount of suspense. Um, and uh, But then there's also some magic as well. There was some there's also, there is a fair amount of kidnapping in this series, which is the part that I had a problem with. And I find a fair amount of Shifter and Paranormal Romance does have a lot of pretty intense, suspensey stuff. Um, but this one, it's, it was very intense. So this is another one that I got from uh, December 2015 uh, when I did the reader's service. Is that what it's called? Like the subscription service? I tried out the Nocturne line. I do like normal romance so yeah so now I actually I think this is this might be the last one in the series so if I read this oh, I finished the series not totally sure there might be one after that there might be I don't know all right let's see what we can see I don't know what the best way to do the bags is I don't know if that was it Betrayal by Janice Kaiser. I read, so this is a Temptation, which is Harlequin. I read another Temptation earlier this year, and I really liked it. I can't remember if it was by Janice Kaiser or not. Um, and it was like, uh, I really liked it because the female protagonist was uh, ex-FBI, now PI. And she was like the lead on investigating something uh, for an old family friend. And I really like that. I find um, like, like I was really happy that she was the one that was doing the investigating and stuff like that. So I don't know. But that's not this book. This book is Alison Stevens assumes the great soul shattering passion that passed her by. Oh, I said that with the wrong emphasis. She assumed that it's passed her by. After all, she was in her 30s and the realization of her dreams and desires no longer seemed possible. But then, out of the blue, she met David Higson and thought she'd found happiness with the man she'd been searching for all of her life. Oh, but then deceit, betrayal, passion. I, like, I think I'm going to like that one. That sounds pretty intense. And also, around it's got to be around 200 pages. Yep, 216 pages. I like, I like, I like short books. What can I say? <laughs> I really do. I love being able to read a book in, you know, a couple days or a week. I love it. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, oh another Temptation. Wow, they look very different. This one is very different from this one. Okay, so this is One Eager Bride to Go by Pamela Buford. I think it's the third in a four book series. Did I give myself a cheat sheet? No. Oh, wow, but it has the original receipt from Cole's Book People and Commerce Court from... Where is the... Not sure. Oh, 2000 and... 
one. You can barely see it. Someone paid cash. $4.82. I'm pretty sure I got it for either a dollar or four for a dollar because that's where I tend to get these books. Um, so yeah, this one I think is a four book series with four friends and it's all about their different uh, shenanigans or lead up to getting married or yeah. Oh, the wedding ring. Four high school friends made a pact. Every girl marries her ideal man by 30 or be prepared for matchmaking. So that's it. If they don't get married by 30, they're going to set each other to let each other be matchmakers. So that is it. And I think it's like the third in the series. I love this. I don't know for some reason why. I, I just really love that. Although I can't figure out who, who that is from that. The hair length doesn't seem to... Oh, it must be... Her hair must be up. Okay, I'm guessing it's her. Not that it matters. Not that it matters. Okay, I don't think I'm going to make this all in one video, but we're going to see how many more we can do. Whew! Let's see. What is this one going to be? Oh! No place to hide. So this is a uh, love inspired romantic suspense. This is by Lisa Harris. I haven't read any love inspired. Um, they are faith based, faith based and usually Christian. Although there's also some Amish ones. Former Navy diver Ryan Kendall's father sent him to Brazil with a simple assignment extract compromised witness Ely Webb. Ely Webb? Ely Webb? But she's determined to trek into the Amazon following the lead of her father's murder. Oh, he must protect her. Oh my god, cartel, pirates, dangerous jungle. Wow, that is, that's quite intense for uh, Love Inspired. Not like I know because, as I just said, I haven't read any yet. So maybe this will be the first one. Very excited. All right. I really like this cover, or this picture. It was from a nature book. Yes, I chop up books to use for art <laughs> and things like this and for projects. Hey, when you when you buy a book, you get to choose what you do with it. <laughs> that's how that's my perspective. Let's see what this one is. Ooh, another temptation. I did not realize I had, had so many temptations. Night Pleasures by Jewel McBride. Heat. Ah, was it business? They're all different. So Edison Lone, Bad Boy, Loner, Wary, an expert at cracking secret codes and breaking hearts. And then Selena Silverwood, Sexy, Vulnerable, Wary, they're both wary, uh, passionate about her writing and in over her head. Ooh, looks good to me. <laughs> looks good to me. Okay, let's do this. Let's get, I have two more in this small pile and then I think we might have to do a separate video for more. Oops. Oh, a desire. Okay. Convenient Husband by Joan Hall. How? Ho Cole? Hole? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. This is an older title because it has a. Um, not a photograph. It's both. Both are probably paintings, probably gouache. I don't know. But this is Man of the Month. So this looks like a western-ish one. Might be a... Oh my god. There is a recipe for raisin pie. In the front. That's awesome. I was trying to find the date. Oh, it's a 92. I'm surprised. I don't know when they switched from... Well, that actually could be an artist rendering. Whereas this is definitely a photograph that's been, you know, helped out. All the, <laughs> unless he actually was an incubus. Incubus? Incubus. Yeah. Succubus. Incubus. Yeah. Okay. Convenient husband. All right. Let's do another one. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh. I just ripped right through the back there. And we go. Oh, yay! A super romance. A Better Man by Emily Rose. And this looks like a police officer. 
time to show them what he's made of. So super romances are on the longer side of things. I think it was a line that was retired, um, but this is only 282 pages. So I don't read a lot of contemporary ones. I, don't, I haven't read one about a police officer in a while. I'm sure there has been ones with law enforcement. I'm not sure. It's been a while. I'm continuing to unwrap things. Look at that. <laughs> see more. Let's see what's in the Prince bag. Ooh. Secret Agent Surrender by Elizabeth Heider. This is part of the Lawman Bullets and Brawn, and it's a Harlequin Intrigue. Wow, so that's more. This is about a DEA, undercover DEA agent. And his first secret crush. Um, there's also a drug lord. I imagine the drug lord is not his crush. I'm jumping the different lines in the description. Wow, that's funny. I got two in a row that are law enforcement. E. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do another one. This is so much fun. I don't want to stop. <laughs> oh, we have an entry. Oh, you can tell by the sunglasses sort of when this is. Um, yeah, 2001. So, The Hidden Years by Susan Kearney. And, wow, you can barely see the woman on this one. This is part of the Hide and Seek series, it looks like. Hide and Seek. Three siblings in mortal danger. Can they find the secrets of their past in time to save their lives? He'd opened his heart to her. So that definitely sounds like it's part of a series. Uh, hopefully it is one. Wow, it has a map of Florida and a cast of characters, which the intrigues do. The other lines don't tend to do. So, okay, let's go for one more. Maybe two. Oh, this one's, this one's pretty hefty. Ooh, that one needs, needs some help. Okay. Oh gosh, okay, so and this is Daughter of Deceit by Victoria Holt. Um, so Nicole, no, Noelle. Trey Mason, daughter of a famous actress, grown up amid the flurry of opening nights and elegant parties. Oh. Well, then there's more stuff. And then I'm like, oh, solace, dark secret, happiness, shadow of doubt, revelation. This, I don't know if this, this looks a bit, given the... I don't know what the... Oh, it looks, um, like, historical? Oh, it's set in different locations. It's from 92. Another one that is an artist rendering. So this is 2001. Definitely a photo. I wonder when we switched over from one to the other. I guess between this, right? Between the 90s and the 2000s? So Mid-90s, maybe? But this is also historical, so that might have been a choice to do it like that. It looks historical. I don't have to say that from her from her dress and oh my gosh I don't know what that's called what's that called jewelry ish for your hair it's not a word okay I am going to leave it there because I don't want the camera to max out so if you haven't guessed yet category is romance yes this is romance and it is very harlequin heavy although there are a couple that aren't Harlequins, but these are mostly Harlequins. And I am very thankful that Value Village often has Harlequins for 99 cents plus buy four, get one free. And Bookends has Harlequins at, I think, four for a dollar. So I definitely took advantage of that. And then the local library, they have them on the cart and they're usually a dollar. But of course, not doing that right now because of COVID. But I obviously have lots to enjoy and there is more. I think I still have about seven, seven more. So there will be more. So there will probably be like an overspill 
or overflow video. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guessed the category or if you thought it might be something else. And if you made it all the way to the very end, drop uh, any pink emoji in the comment section or anything that represents romance to you. And yeah, and I will be back soon with another video and I will try not to get distracted by all of these awesome books that now I want to read all of them right now. Thank you for watching.